Hello, here you see an animation of three objects and the interesting thing about it is that when I pick the prism for example and I move it to the left the helix follows sort of but it doesn't follow exactly uh, its position is an average between the position of the helix and the pipe so if I move the prism down all the way down it always keeps in the middle between those two objects if I move it further there it keeps in the middle as well and um, I've animated this uh, object here so it moves from left to right and slightly up and you see that um, the helix rotates a little bit it rotates exactly the way the prism rotates so whatever I do with these objects it will always be in the average in, in the middle it will never touch the other objects uh, I'm talking about the helix it's totally dependent on their position and partly of the rotation of the heli uh, of the prism so how did I do this let's start with a new scene in this case I right mouse click here and I create a prism a pipe and a helix and I move the prism to the left and the pipe to the right so the helix sits in the middle. Now I need uh, three shaders for them in order to give them colors and since we're dealing with abstract nodes in this tutorial uh, let's start with the hypershader. The hypershader is uh, the texturing mainland here. Uh, you just press tab just briefly and type in AI standard and create a standard surface shader which is here you can press ctrl D in order to duplicate it and ctrl D in order to duplicate it again so we have AI standard surface shader 1 2 and 3 now you can close that window and right mouse click on the prism and assign an existing material which is the standard surface shader 1 do the same here existing material 2 and here the existing material number 3 let's uh, choose the attribute editor here standard surface shader now let's select them all go to windows and node editor just let's meditate on that menu entry here uh, for, for a second Windows node editor this is the node editor it shows us an abstract representation of the selected parts of our scene the polyhelix the polyprism and the polypipe now we need to briefly talk about these things for example we have here P pipe shape and here we have P pipe what's the difference um, let's go to the well let's go to the to the pipe here select the pipe here you have the P pipe one it contains the transform attributes that's the information we'll use later and the rotate information that's in the P pipe that one whereas in the P pipe shape we have tessellation attributes which have to do with the rendering and in the poly pipe which is not P pipe it's poly pipe we have the factory which makes that pipe which makes that object the radius for example general things not about position or uh, rotation or scaling but about basic the making of this object so we want to deal with a translation which is here and uh, the translation is in the P pipe P prism and P helix ready okay we want the prism and the pipe control the helix so let's move the prism and the pipe that's the P prism not the P shape whatever uh, to the left and the P 
helix to the right. So we need something in here which creates an average of the position, which is called translation in computer animation, uh, and feeds that average value into the polyhelix. So the helix will always be in the middle between the two of them. Well, we need to open this by double clicking it two times and now we see the sections here and right here we have the translation if we open this little plus sign we have the translation in three dimensions x y and z of course let's close it again uh, it means that we want to output three values now let's open the um, polyhelix it has a translation of course three values so we could feed the translation of the p prism into the p helix but uh, we don't want to directly use that prism translation or position uh, status to control the so that would be boring the helix we want to use an average and that's what's happening now um, we press tab and we create we write type in average and you see a plus minus average here as it's a suggestion and we pick it it sits here let's open that one it has on the left side three input possibilities let's call it possibilities uh, either you can input several values in one dimension meaning numbers like 5 or 6.4 etc this would be for two-dimensional ve vectors for example well, I don't know currently an, a nice example and this is for three-dimensional values and the translation values are three-dimensional so uh, let's open this and the plus minus average wants an input for uh, with 3d value meaning basically three values in one package so here we have them the poly prism, the P prism, sorry, translate three parameters, go from here into the input of the plus minus average. Nothing in the scene uh, has changed. Uh, there's just an abstract node sitting somewhere there doing nothing, just getting an input. It doesn't know what to do with it, it doesn't do anything with it currently. So let's open this one now. And here we have the translate. And you've seen that we have an, a new option here to put it in here. And now we have two inputs with three-dimensional values, x, y, and z. And now we'll simply output the 3D values of the plus minus average into the translate. Go into translate of the polyhelix, of the p-helix actually. And now the P helix is controlled, nothing seems to have changed, by those two. So, for example, if we move that one up, the helix moves up as well. But it's not the average, because if it was the av average of the Y translation, it would sort of be somewhere in the middle between the two of them. And that's the last thing we need to check here. Let's click and select the plus minus average node minimize that window now plus minus average is selected here it's none of the objects in the scene it's that abstract node which makes the average and the average operation is currently set to sum so it sums up the values of these two that's why it's so high currently and uh, if I lower it, it goes lower, etc. Uh, so it's not in the middle. That's a matter of the plus minus average. So instead of the sum, we want to have the average. If you don't want to uh, have the node uh, to have any influence at all, we just choose no operation, but we want average. And now the helix jumps into the middle between them. Now we make an animation. Uh, we are at the beginning of the animation, we go here, set a keyframe, go to the end of the animation, 
and set another keyframe and go to the middle of the animation and move the pipe down and set another keyframe. So this is our animation now and you see how the helix nicely follows uh, that object but always respects that object. And if we move that object all the way up the whole animation will be different because the helix is dependent on the two of them, not just on the yellow one. We'll do something with the prism. We want to animate the rotation. And, uh, well, the rotation, let me see, the axis is it's the z-axis. I want to rotate in the z-axis. And I can type in here, in the that's the y, that's the z, equals sign of time and I press enter so let's edit that right mouse button edit expression and type in 20 times signs of time edit and let's see what's coming out of this. Now we have this rotation information. It's the prism Z rotation axis. Let's play with it in the node editor. So the node editor is here. Now let's open the rotation section. So we're dealing with the Z rotation. So we're inputting a 1D value. So let's put the rotation value in here. It creates a unit conversion node, which is uh, nice to have. I made a tutorial where I already used it, but we want to output our 1D information now into the um, rotate information here. Let's open the rotate section. Output 1D goes to the rotation Z. And now the animation goes like this. <laughs> 